Welcome back to 30 Days of Lightroom, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing the Detail tab in Lightroom Classic, and we're gonna talk all about sharpening and noise reduction within this Detail tab. Now, when you import a raw photo, Lightroom likes to automatically apply its own sharpening by default, and that's okay, and for the standard situation, that typically works, but I always like to go in and tweak my details and my sharpening and my noise reduction for each image because for example if we take a look at this portrait this is very tack sharp and even if you take a completely tack sharp photo i think digital images all need just a touch of sharpening to look their best because again you can make mediocre photos but we all want our photos to look the best and like i was saying before each type of image will require slightly different sharpening techniques and noise reduction techniques to make it look the best it can look. So for example, I have some different settings that I would apply to a portrait versus a starry night landscape, for example. We can go check out a quick landscape photo. And this one works. So you can see in this landscape image, we have very high color noise reduction because if I were to turn that down, look at all this color noise that pops up. And that's not necessarily something that I'm going to need in a portrait shot. So let's get right into editing this portrait and messing with the detail and the noise reduction and learning a little bit about what each one of these sliders does. So we have our portrait here again, looks nice and sharp, but we can always add just a bit more sharpening. So if we see this little window up here, this is showing us a 100% preview of our portrait. We can move that around. So if, for example, we're zoomed out, we will always have a little area right here, this little preview window, where we can see what our sharpness is doing at 100%. But I find it's easier, this window is so tiny, it's easier just to zoom in right here. And we can use this little target tool and click that, and we can select which part of the image we want our little preview on. You may or may not find that useful, but let's go ahead and let's talk about sharpening now. In our sharpening box, we have amount, radius, detail, and masking. And a little trick when we're talking about noise reduction and sharpening, we can hold the Alt key to turn our image black and white and go ahead and drag that. And that just allows us holding the Alt key and sliding just kind of gives us a better idea of what that sharpening looks like when we take away the distracting noise. So as you can see, when I move each one of these sliders, it does something a little bit different. Masking really does something different. We'll talk about that here in a second, but holding the Alt key for each of these turns our image black and white, removes the color so we can better see what we're doing with each one of these tools. So amount for starters is pretty simple. That's the amount of sharpening and I can apply a lot of sharpening. I can apply a little bit of sharpening, but as you can see, we all need just a touch of sharpness. That looks pretty darn good right about there, right around 20. That looks fantastic. Now, a good way to think about sharpening is if you think about it like it's contrast. All sharpening is really doing is changing the contrast between individual pixels. So if you think about it that way, the rest of these sliders going to make a lot more sense. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to max out my sharpening, turn it way up just so you can see it a lot better as an example on YouTube. Again, I would never sharpen an image that much, but I really want to emphasize this for the sake of this video. Let's talk about radius next. Again, holding the alt key, I will drag the slider and you can see we're kind of bringing out more detail and what radius is doing. Remember when I talked about sharpening being contrast, radius is how many pixels you want to include in your sharpening. Do you want to include pixels that are just right next to each other like this? Or if I turn radius up, I'm going to include a wider range of pixels that are being included in that contrast or that sharpening. So you can see that doesn't look very good with a large radius. If I turn that radius down to about one pixel, that looks a little bit better. Again, for this example, I have sharpening maxed out. I'll turn that down just a touch so it's more realistic. But radius is how many pixels are included when you are playing with that contrast. So I typically keep this around one. That's usually safe for portraits. 
And if you want a much finer sharpening, you can go less than a pixel. But again, for this example, we will use one. So let's go down to our detail. And our detail is exactly what it says, our very, very tiny, fine details within our image. Again, holding Alt, you can kind of see what detail is doing, bringing out those tiny little pores, and it can also bring out the noise. So be careful with detail. Slide that up and down. You can see almost no detail and really making those fine details pop. That looks fantastic. Now let's talk about masking. Masking is simply an automatic mask that Lightroom creates based on contrast to decide what parts of your image are going to have sharpening applied and which will not. So again, if we hold the Option key or the Alt key, we can slide up our masking and we can see the white parts of the image here will have sharpening and the black parts will not. So if we turn this down to zero, the entire image will be uniformly sharp and have sharpening applied to every single pixel. And as I slide this to the right, a smaller amount of the image will have sharpening applied. Now this tool is good, for example, if you have a very noisy background or if you have lots of shadows in corners and a blurry background where the noise might pop up if you apply too much sharpening, you can apply this just to the details in the image. So you can see here, it will be applied just to the eyes, to the shirt, and areas of high contrast, and it won't be applied as much in those shadowy areas. So you can use masking to really refine what is being sharpened in your image. Again, black areas are not having as much sharpening applied, and white areas are the masked areas that are having a lot of sharpening applied. That looks pretty good. So let's go back now and just kind of review sharpening before we move on to noise reduction. For a typical image, I'll keep my sharpening pretty low. I will keep my radius around one and my detail typically anywhere from 20 to 50. You can play around with that. And masking is really gonna depend on your image. Somewhere around 15 looks good for this image. Make sure we're not making any noise pop up. We're still getting some very sharp eyes and that looks pretty darn good for sharpening. Let's talk about noise reduction now. Let's talk about luminance, detail, and contrast. First, these little sliders right here, these three go together. So again, if we hold down the Alt key, it's gonna turn our image black and white and we start moving our slider and you can really see 100% noise reduction, really we lose all of our details. And then right around five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that's pretty safe for this image. We're not losing our details. But again, if you pay attention to the noise over here in the right hand side of the image, we're really minimizing that noise and that grain. And that is what our luminant smoothing does with this first slider. It minimizes that kind of black and white or colorless grain in your image, typically from a higher ISO. Or if you lift your shadows too much, you'll notice kind of that grain, especially in smoother areas or areas that should be smooth in your image. So again, for the sake of this video, I will turn this up to 100% just so we can see what exactly our luminance smoothing is doing. And you can see that really smooths the skin really too much. In this case, we're losing almost all of our detail, but that's what these next two sliders do. You can see our detail slider. If I turn this all the way down, I'm losing all of the detail. This almost looks like a pastel painting or watercolor. And if I were to turn this up to 100%, we're bringing that detail back again, still very smooth. We are losing some detail in the hair, but if we crank that detail, we are getting some of that detail back even with our luminance smoothing turned up to 100%. And similarly with our contrast, it works on slightly larger details. So pay attention, for example, to the cheek right here as I play with this contrast slider. So some of those bigger contrast details you can see I can emphasize or de-emphasize. This really looks like a painting now. That does not even look like a photograph anymore. So I'm gonna turn this noise reduction down I'm gonna turn the detail to about 50%. That's usually the default. That looks pretty good. And for contrast, when my luminance noise reduction is this small, this really almost has no effect on my image. So I can leave that at zero or 50%. So that was our luminance smoothing and the top part of our noise reduction. Let's talk about color noise. Now in an image like this, 
you can see we had a nice brightly lit room, some great sunset, golden hour lighting. There are some dark areas, but we're not gonna experience a lot of color noise in this image. So if I zoom in here, and even if I crank the slider up to 100%, you're gonna see almost no difference. Let's take a look back at that starry night sky and let's really see what color noise does. So we'll go back to that image. All right, so here is our night sky photo and I can see lots of funky colored pixels that shouldn't be there and that is color noise. You can see little red dots in here, some other dots in between the stars that just shouldn't be there. Again, color noise. So if I turn up my color noise, you can see all those disappear. So now I just have a nice night sky photo and I see the stars. I also have this little lens flare here and we're gonna also use that to see how this color noise slider works. So color noise also has a detail slider that works very similarly to the detail with our smoothing, except it works with color and smoothness works somewhat similar to masking. So you can see here, we have a little detail in this lens flare, very noisy. And you can see if I start to play with this, you can see slight detail in color contrast over here in this lens flare. And smoothing is similar to our contrast. It plays with that bigger contrast. You can see some of these colors are being merged. We're not necessarily dealing with the contrast of the noise, but the contrast of the color within our image. So we can find some other parts of the image, turn our color noise way up, turn that reduction up to 100%. And then you can start to see the difference if I play with the smoothing slider in some of these colors in the mountains. So I never really like to max anything out to 100 in an actual edit. Just kind of showing you this smoothness is reducing the noise of the color in parts of the image that I actually want to keep the color in. So be careful with that. And then same thing with detail. You can see here if you pay attention to this tree, if I'm removing color noise, it's getting rid of kind of this abrasion and weird coloring going on around this tree and this spill that shouldn't be happening if you pay attention to that right there. So that is what your color noise will do. It will reduce those funky colored pixels that don't belong in your image that just happen because your sensor ISO is very high, your sensor may be warm, or there's just not that detail in the image and you have to reduce it. So let's go ahead and go back to our portrait. And so again, our portrait looks good. If we were to max out our color noise in this portrait, you can see detail isn't really gonna do anything, but if I mess with smoothness, pay attention to the lips here. When I turn that smoothness up, it's actually affecting, you can see that hue shift where my colors are in the image. So be very careful with that, especially on portraits, especially on those fine details. And color noise, I will never take that above 10 or 15. I really never run into an example where I've needed to crank that at all. Usually 10 at the most will take care of it. So that is the detail tab within Lightroom Classic. We covered sharpening and luminance smoothing and color noise reduction. Be very careful with these sliders. Always adjust them to your particular image because that's how you're gonna get the best quality out of each individual photo. So if you learned something from this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to Run and Gun for all of my videos, and make sure you share this playlist with a friend that may be learning Lightroom or struggling to learn Lightroom. So until next time, get out and go shoot.